Hello and welcome to another episode of Disney Movie Investigation. If this is your first time watching, welcome to the show. In each episode, we take a look at a movie that is featured on Disney+. Plus. On this episode, we are going deep into the dark world of animation as we take a look at The Black Cauldron. And stay tuned for our bonus story as we take a look at the dis extinct Disney attraction, Cinderella Ca Cinderella's Castle Mystery Tour. And if you are enjoying these videos, I do ask that you please hit that subscribe button. That way you'll be notified with each new video. But for now, sit back and enjoy this episode of Disney Movie Investigation. Uh, so like I said, today we are covering The Black Cauldron. Uh, this movie was released on July 24th, 1985. It was directed by Ted Berman and Richard Rich. Uh, it is based on The Book of Three and The Black Cauldron by Lloyd Alexander. Uh, the production companies were Walt Disney Pictures and Silver Screen Partners too. It was distributed by Buena Vista Distribution. Uh, the box or the budget for this movie was forty-four million, and unfortunately, it did a box office return of twenty-one point three million. In terms of the production, Walt Disney uh, Pictures had optioned the screen rights to Lloyd Alexander's five-volume book series uh, in nineteen seventy-one, with pre-production beginning in nineteen seventy-three. Originally, this movie was scheduled to be released in 1980, and animator Mel Shaw had created conceptual pastoral sketches, but when CEO Ron Miller saw the sketches, he considered the, product, the project too advanced for his newly hired animators. The movie would be pushed back to Christmas 1984, with The Fox and the Hound taking over the 1980 uh, animated slot. Vance Gary would uh, then be selected to create storyboards for the film, and he would establish the principal characters and the villain, the Horned King, for the movie. The studio would also hire British screenwriter Rosemary Ann Session to create the script for the film. And the original uh, director, John Musker, would expand the first act, but this act was deemed too comedic for the film and it would be ultimately dropped. Tim Burton would also create visual character artwork, but this was also thrown out as Disney wanted the film to be very similar to the look of Sleeping Beauty. John Musker would ask to be taken off the project because of creative differences, and he went on to work on The Great Mouse Detective. Directing duties would then be signed to Richard Rich and Ted Berman. Uh, the score for this movie was composed by Elmer Bernstein. So the movie was set to go with a screening, and just before 1984 Christmas release, a screening was held in a private theater at the studio in Burbank. To say that this did not go well would be an understatement. The Cauldron Born sequence proved to be too dark and intense for children, and many of them would run out of the theater before the film was even finished. Disney Studio Chairman Jeffrey Katzenberg would order that the film be edited and scenes be cut to limit the length of the film. Producer Joel Hale would object, saying that it was too late at this point in the production for an animated film to be edited. Katzenberg responded by having the film brought to an editing bay and he would edit the film himself. Hale would go to Disney CEO Michael Eisner and Eisner told Katzenberg to stop. The decision was made to push the film back to July of 1985 so that the film could be reworked. Ultimately, 12 minutes of the film was cut with several scenes being reworked and reanimated. Most of the scenes that were cut included scenes that contain violent content. So let's take a look at the voice cast. So we have Grant Bradley who plays Tehran, Susan Sheridan who plays Princess Eloi, Freddie Jones who plays Dalvin, Nigel Hawthorne who plays Fedwitter Flam, Arthur Mallet provides the voice of King Eldig, John Biner provides the voice of Gergi and Dolly, Phil Fauna Caro provides the voice of the Creeper. John Hurt provides the voice of the Horned King. Billy Hayes as Ulrich and John Houston as the narrator. In terms of the plot, Tehran is an assistant pig keeper with boyish dreams of becoming a great warrior. However, he has, put, he has to put his dreary dreaming aside when his charge, an ocular pig named Hedwin, is kidnapped by the evil lord known as the Horned King. The villain hopes Han will show him the way to the Black Cauldron, which has the power to create an army of unstoppable soldiers. With the aid of a stubborn princess, an exaggerating bard, and a pestering creature called Gurgi, Charon will try to save the world of Pyrin from the whole Horned King. 
as his new friends face witches, elves, magic swords, and the cauldron itself, Turan starts to learn what being a hero really means and that some things are more important than glory. So this film has an interesting leg legacy. Uh, the film would be released in home video in the United Kingdom in 1997 and in the U.S. in 1988. Uh, the movie was considered a disaster from Disney's point of view. However, characters would appear in photo ops in most uh, Disney parks in Fantasyland in an attempt to re gain some popularity. Uh, in 1986, Lancer's Inn, which was a quick service restaurant, was renamed Gurgi's Munchies and Crunchies, and it would remain in Fantasyland in Disney World until 1993 when it was renamed Lumiere's Kitchen. On July 11, 1986, Tokyo Disneyland would open Cinderella's Castle Mystery Tour, which we will go over in thorough in, in detail in a second. Uh, this would feature the Horned King. Um, a video game was designed by Al Lowell and would be released in 1986. And in 2016, Disney acquired the rights to the Chronicles of Pyron in which the Black Cauldron is based on. The intention was a live-action remake of the animated film, but nothing has been officially uh, announced. And then currently in Disney's mobile game, The Magic Kingdom, the Black Cauldron characters do appear as part of that game. So would I recommend this movie? Uh, so first of all, this is the most non-Disney, Disney animated movie ever. If the Disney logo was not on the beginning of the movie, I probably would have thought this is more like a Ralph Bashy Lord of the Rings type movie. Uh, the positives of the movie is the animation is really good. Beautiful artwork, great background paintings. The movie itself, very beautiful with definitely great Gothic Renaissance style uh, paintings to them. Where the movie tends to fall apart, unfortunately, is the character and the character development and the story. In two, terms of the character, there are way too many of them, uh, where a lot of them have no development and it, they're strictly there to move the plot along. A great example of this is Fergie. Uh, the movie, I think, wanted the emotion to come between Fergie and Turan, but the story just doesn't develop the relationship enough where the sacrifice at the end of the movie doesn't have the emotion that I think they were looking for to create that dramatic moment. The other area that is the story that is not very well developed is why the audience should care about any of the events that are happening in the movie. An example of this is the Horn King. There is no real explanation of what his motive is. Like, does he want to rule the world? Is he seeking revenge? Really don't know. Nothing is really said. Um, and it's hard for the audience to invest emotion uh, when they never really know the stakes. If you think of a great example of this, with Gaston in Beauty and the Beast, you know that Gaston wants to marry Belle. It's very specific. It's very clear what his intentions are. You have no idea what the Horned King is really all about. Overall, um, I would warn younger viewers from watching this because this movie is incredibly dark and can be scary. However, I would still watch this movie in terms of the animation because it's great, beautiful paintings, great, beautiful background art. So there is something there to be watched. But in terms of a movie with a great story, unfortunately, this one does fall a little short. So let's take a look at our bonus story as we take a look at Ca Cinderella's Castle's Mystery Tour. Uh, so this was a attraction located in Tokyo Disneyland, and this was a walkthrough attraction that was located in the dungeon of Cinderella's Castle. The attraction is inspired by Japanese ghost houses and has a running time of 16 minutes. It's one of the only attractions in Tokyo Disneyland that does not have English interpretation. It is entirely the uh, cast member guide does the tour entirely in Japanese. It was an opening day attraction and would feature the tagline, Can You Conquer the Evil Forces of the Disney Villains? So I'm going to go through the, the walkthrough of the attractions. I'll try and put up as much visual imagery as possible. The problem with this attraction is it takes place almost entirely in the dark. Uh, so it was hard for to create visual imagery with this one, but we will do our best. Uh, so guests begin the attraction by entering behind Cinderella's castle with groups of 20 to 30 people being led into a waiting room. Guests would be then introduced to their tour guide who leads them into a room featuring Disney heroes. These include Snow White, Aurora, Pinocchio, and Tron. The magic mirror from Snow White then appears and says that the Disney villains are not getting enough recognition. The guide argues with the magic mirror and soon the portraits of the heroes slowly turn into the villains. The mirror then challenges the group to enter the dungeon of the castle. 
the guide will then lead them down a set of two uh, to a two-story staircase into the lab from the witch from Snow White. The group then sees a book open to a recipe for making poison apples along with an anim animatronic crow rocking back and forth on the skull. The evil queen's shadow can be seen in the background while all this is happening. The guide then urges guests that they should keep going and then leads them through a series of dark tunnels with the evil queen lurking in the background. Guests are then led into the next room with the haunted knights of armor and living skeletons. The guests continue moving forward and are led into another corridor which features a projection on the wall of the Knight on Bald Mountain sequence from Fantasia. As the guests move forward, they are moved into a room with a water fountain and guests look down into the water and they see the minions from Sleeping Beauty in the reflection. The guests continue down the hallway as the minions follow closely behind. A talking skull then appears in the hallway urging guests to turn back before it's too late. The next room is the Cave of the Hidden Jewels, and after the guests have entered, a lightning strike reveals that there's a dragon in the room with them. Guests quickly leave the room and are led into an elevator, and soon after the elevator starts, a demon voice is heard, saying that he has now taken over the ride. As the elevator stops, they are led into a room filled with tapestry, showing the story of the Black Cauldron. The guide will then choose a guest, to carry the Sword of Light as they enter into the next room. The next room features the Black Cauldron, the actual Black Cauldron, along with skeletons on the floor. The room quickly goes dark and then illuminates fire and smoke as the Horned King has arrived. The Horned King then summons his demons to take guests into the Black Cauldron to meet their fate. Suddenly, a bright light illuminates the room and the guest that is holding the Store of Light the Sword of Light points it towards the Horned King. The sword then shoots a beam of life towards the Horned King, and then the Horned King screams in terror as he is about to perish. The lights then come on, and the guide cheers their victory and leads them out of the castle. The guest who was holding the sword is then presented with a hero medal on his way out of the castle. So this attraction was really popular uh, on opening day. Um, for those of you that want a little bit more detail and more picture, there is a great video on the Defunct Land channel um, that shows video footage from the from the um, from the Cinderella's Castle Mystery Tour, and it goes into a little bit more detail than I just did. Um, but the the attraction was really popular, and it did start to see the attendance dip uh, not until two thousand and six, where unfortunately it would be closed at that point and re themed to Fairy Tale Hall, which was less scary and retold the story of Cinderella. Uh, through a series of room, rooms and dioramas. So thank you so much for joining us here on Disney Movie Investigation. I would invite anyone to please leave a comment below on what they think of the Black Cauldron, or if you're one of the lucky few that got to uh, go through Cinderella's Castle's Mystery Tour, I would love to know what your experience are, experience was with that attraction. So as we look forward to our next episode, we are going to be exploring a Halloween favorite as we take a look at the original Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So until next time, I hope you have a magical day and we will see you real soon.